What's up, everybody? It's Sugar Erica from the Classic Garden Blog. Happy Saturday to you. It is a Juneteenth holiday weekend, third third day weekend, three day weekend. We went out with our realtor earlier, did a lot of stuff, and went to go see different things. So I was busy. I was busy. I kept adjusting the time, but I didn't adjust it right. So hey, what's up? Welcome to the show. We're talking about built to sell, built review slash. Why is it so hard to buy businesses? And I heard there's a lot of people selling you uh, wolf tickets online. And so I just come on here to dispel the wolf tickets, right? I know I am that kid sister, that middle sister that dispels the wolf tickets for you. And, and some people hate it. Some people love it. So welcome. If you've ever been here before, my name is Erica Williams of the Classic Line blog, author of the Smartphone Millionaire book, How to Invest in People, Businesses, and Real Estate from the Palm of Your Hand. Now, there's something you're seeing a lot in media and marketing right now and ads on TikTok, Instagram, that honestly, the baby boomer population, and this is the book we're talking about before we're all here, the baby boomer population right now, um, for the next 15 years almost, you pretty much will have 10,000 people either retiring, um, business owners selling, people selling homes, and so regardless of a recession or aka depression, whatever people want to, uh, we're not at either one of those yet. Either. We're not even in a recession. We're in inflation right now. Um, people are selling you that it's going to be so easy to buy a business. Now, if you've been watching this channel, you saw me try to buy a business off two older gentlemen. Now, I needed more education. I needed more skills. I needed more tax. I needed more funding. Um, I also tried to buy another business. Again, I tried to buy a business, a cleaner for somebody in North Carolina. I tried to buy a couple things, and, and it was using my YouTube money wisely and unwisely. Um, it, but I read this book, uh, I'm with, in a group of people reading this book, but I'm also going to encourage my students to read it, uh, Built to Sell. Uh, he has also automatic customer and art of selling your business. But the problem is we live in a very microwave society and people are giving you a piece of content, a piece of information, but they're not giving you the whole information, right? They're just not giving you the whole information. And that's my goal here on this channel to always be very transparent. Uh, and so there's three types of business owners you're going to come across as you go out here. Now, I call the fourth one. The fourth one is a wannabe. They always saying they're doing something, they're going to start a business, they're going to start a business, and they never start. So that's the fourth. But the true three out of this book, Built to Sell, is first one is a mountain climber. The second one is a freedom fighter. The third is a craft slash master of craft. That's the best way I can kind of like short change this conversation. Um, mountain climber. Jeff Bezos, mountain climber. We're going to space. Uh, Elon Musk, going to space. Dogecoin. All these way high big goals, right? When men start businesses, 90% of the time when men start businesses, they have world domination on their mind. Look at that world domination, right? Uh, and so they usually fall sometimes under the category of mountain climber. Now, but you have a hardcore, now according to the guy who wrote the book, he thinks 60% of people are freedom fighters, which I could believe too. So number two is freedom fighter. I fall in this category. I did not know. Okay. Freedom fighter is a person who's just, their nature, their who they are as a person is like freedom. They don't fit in jobs. They don't work well with others. Um, you know, all these people run around calling themselves alpha, alpha men. You can't be an alpha man to be at a job. <laughs> just That's how we know our society has so few of them. Right. If you read the book, um, Illusions of Entrepreneurship, I'll put that up here in a minute in a second. It only 11 percent of society is if, if that really 10 percent of society are true entrepreneurs, business owners. It's a, a, a heaviness, a responsibility, um, a desire to freedom fighter. Right. Freedom fighter doesn't always play well with others. A freedom fighter rather. And, and there's some reasons I kind of give you guys some, a little bit more here. Freedom fighters is like at all costs, I got to be free. I can't even breathe at work. My neck hurts when I come into the building. I have aches and pains in my body, right? That kind of thing. The third is a craft, master of craft. It's someone who, you know, you, 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 we've all, like, if you ever read the book, E-Myth Revisited, that's another great book to add to this list that is kind of you guys' homework when you see all this marketing for business brokering. E-Myth Revisited is where somebody is a, hair salon person, a master craft, barbershop guy, a woodworker, a mechanic. Some of these people, they don't care if they get paid 
well or don't get paid well, right? They care, but in general, they care about the craft, right? We we all know the hair salon person who overbooks or goes too long on a hairdo, but she's trying to make it the best she can make it, right? We all know the mechanic that's taking two weeks to finish your car, and you're like, man, just wrap it up, get it out of there. Um, we all know the the guy that sells woodworking or some type of farm or crafter, and, and those people have personalities. And so these are things you must learn when you're trying to one, buy a business from people, and two, sell your business, right? So prime example, the more I try to get myself under the mountain climber mantra, bring on staff, uh, let let equity partners come in and stuff like that, it drove me crazy because it, I'm a freedom fighter. Um, the desire to work with investors drives me crazy because it's almost like uh, as a freedom fighter, when it comes to selling, if you get in the book and it's part about selling, a person who is on a mission, right? Yeah, there you go, John. If someone's on a mission, they don't care. They'll sell shares of their company to get to the next mission. That's why you can go on Shark Tank and see people sell their whole company and start another one because their mission is this creation, right? Their mission isn't to be tied to this one company forever. Uh, again, the power of this book is talking about the niche. And a lot of times people watch my channel and go, well, Eric, I want to do like you. I want to talk about all these topics. I'm like, no, the power on YouTube and podcasting is the niche. You know, I, I literally sat down with several marketing consultants who were like, hey, let's pull all this Tech Tuesday stuff off and put it on a whole other channel, which they were right. But at the end of the day, I didn't care. <laughs> right? Like, I care and I don't, right? Um, I, I honestly booked them for that concept to let them kind of dissect my business. But, damn, my finger hurts. Okay. Uh, and so the thing about a freedom fighter is if you're in a selling mode, a mountain climber, someone who's like, hey, I'll sell equity of the company. I'll do whatever I can to keep the growth, massive, crazy growth going. I'm a freedom fighter. Uh, I'm not a master craft person. As you see, I do things on the glass. I'm more of a freedom fighter. They will throttle the business to maintain freedom. Uh, when you come from a family of real estate people and long-term investors and farmers and all this stuff, when people are in this hurry, you know, it's got to turn around in a year, it's got to turn around in two years, it's got to be, it's got to poop, 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 poop. That's not realistic. It's just not. I've grown up in a family of business owners and owners of land. It's not realistic. But most people who are out here watching TV in a microwave cycle. Um, you've already seen come and go this like hoopla of trucking, hoopla of uh, flipping houses, hoopla of wholesaling, honestly. And now we're on a different three, four year hoopla of marketing something else, right? Now they're talking about box trucks. Now they're talking about something else. That's the nature of internet, that's the nature of media. But people who are really in business know, you know, it takes years to get some of these ships right. You know, I'm in an apartment investing group um, where I'm only getting like a thousand dollars back a month right now on my money. And it's going to take another two years before the apartment investing group, one, refinances the property and cashes most people up. The GP people will be the only people left or they'll also sell. Right. And so a lot of times what you learn is people aren't built for long term wealth. Most people want to be rich. Most people want to flip their money. Most people have the mentality of like, hey, when it's time for tax time, I'm going to make this $2,000 become $200,000. And guess what? They never do it because that's not the, that's just not the laws of attraction. The laws of, of multiplying do not apply when you're in this very um, rent-seeking stream. It's got to turn around. It's got to flip for me. You know, I want a guaranteed situation that doesn't work. There's no such thing. Right. And so a lot of people get out here in this business market and they get upset because they want to buy businesses. They want to flip money and realize none of that is true. Hey, man, I gave you two thousand dollars. I want it to be twenty thousand dollars in 10 days. That's just not going to happen. Sorry. So this book is really great because it lets you understand value. What is real value? Exactly. J.G. won't work. I want my cash. Back. <laughs> right. And so what ends up happening is you learn what you learn. In this process of dealing with people working with investors, just being in this business for over 10 years, I've seen people niche down in two to three years in a one niche and just hammer it every single day and make millions. Right? Uh, my trainer is, is one of those people niche down, government contracts, boom, all by himself, just niching it, hitting it every day, boom, got government contracts, one, two, three, four, five, or whatever, four. Um, there's some people I know who are doing government contracts right now. They're literally buying businesses with systems in it. Because of this, also in the book, if you read about it, how do you evaluate a company? 
a lot of times I would come to these companies, come to banks, and I say, hey, this is my company. We make all this money. Look how much money we're making. Okay, do you have reoccurring customers? Do you have subscriptions? Do you have ways that people keep coming back and rebuying, reselling to the same customers? Right? A lot of people promote cross sell right? And when I first came out, that's what I was taught from Ryan Dice, right? Your email list, you know, you ought to get a dollar per email list. People, We have 15,000 people on our email list. In theory, we should get a dollar per person, right? And it's a whole theory. It's a whole email marketing theory. And so every month, we ought to get 15,000 from the email list. That's not always true because cross-selling wears out your list. You should always be adding more people and new customers to your list. Even though that feels transactional, that's where it's at. Now, ways that people can apply this knowledge is if you look at several of the car washes, right? He gave pretty good examples, car wash industry. If you look at the car wash industry, I'm just going to pick, um, this is my site I was talking about, about buy, bid, sell. We're just going to click on Texas real quick, just to, so we have stuff in the background. Okay. Um, on the buy, bid, sell, uh, just give something in the background. So the big thing of what we're trying to talk to people about is if you go to car washes now, they try to get you on a subscription service. Hey, be an unlimited member. And you being a member, you get all these car washes for et cetera, whatever, right? So it may be 20 bucks a month, but if there's a thousand cars that go to that car wash for 20 bucks a month, that's $20,000 that car washes make off automatic withdrawals. The same thing I was telling you guys about creators the other day. I don't think you guys understand what I'm saying. A lot of creators are moving to a subscription model. Alex Beaton was the first person I've ever noticed to do the subscription model. What did Alex Beaton do? YouTube took her down. She was still on Facebook. She was like, oh my God, y'all, they took down my YouTube. And I talked about this in my class with students, but she had this email list of 10,000 people and she had a school with over a thousand people in it. Well, it cost $9 and 99 cents to be in that school. And I think by the end of time, she had like 3000 students in the school. I mean, I, I told this years ago, but I can't remember the exact numbers, but 3000 students times basically $10 a month is what? $30,000 a month. So, so what YouTube took her YouTube. Yes, she panicked. Yes, she freaked out, but she had this reoccurring $30,000 a month coming up. And this is what you're seeing with some of these fitness channels, some of these uh, companies. They're like, hey, I got this app. Come join my app. So all of a sudden, people are on these apps that may be $14.99 a month. You may forget about it. Oh, did you do one on it? Good, 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 good. Uh, $14.99 a month. And what ends up happening is they've got 100,000 people on $14.99 a month. Now, they're going to lose people, you know, month two, month three, and four, of course. People are going to cancel subscriptions. But ultimately, they're making a million dollars off of the initial run of some of these subscriptions, right? We, we love new transactions, new people in the fold, but ultimately, that's how these businesses have value is they have a reoccurring income model, right? And when they don't have it, it's hard to um, buy these businesses and hard for you to sell, right? Like the number one thing I want to buy this guy's company here in uh, uh, near Austin, Texas, is they've been doing business for 20 years, but they had list like thousands of customers listed as just a cash customer, just their phone number, whatever, right? They didn't have the proper documentation. So you're trying to explain to them, I can't buy your business for all this money you think it's worth because you don't even have proper documentation. This is that argument again about QuickBooks and proper documentation and how to have stuff documented so that it's valuable. Right. Same thing when I told people about if you were to get injured today, how would your family know what to do when they came to your office? Right. Um, how would they know to come in and and do step one through ten? A lot of people don't have that in their business model. A lot of people don't have that in their office. And so what you have is a lot of people think there's something they have is valuable and it's not. And this is what you're going to come across in this uh, coming next five to ten years where all these baby boomers want to sell their business. I'm going to just tell you like this. A lot of people that want to set their business are going to be in California, New York, the Midwest, because they're going to become snowboarders. They're going to move southeast. 48% of all homes bought in the last two years were in the southeast. The south will rise again, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? The curse, the curse of the, the Confederates is true, unfortunately, right? They were, they knew y'all would come back down here for this money. Okay. Um, so the South will rise again is literally real and figurative, right? So uh, many of you think, well, Eric, I don't have money to buy these businesses. A lot of these people are going to do owner financing. But again, you're dealing with people who what? 
don't have their business model in a way that you can really profit from it. So again, let's just go through a few here. I just clicked on Texas. I didn't do any particular type of businesses. It's just a ton of businesses. So you've got pizza companies here for 300. You've got a party event rental for 450 in College Station. What's that about, right? College Station. It's a college town by Aggie Town. They're probably newer places, et cetera, et cetera, right? So having to make this venue profitable, right? That's the kind of thing. And marketing is a great place to have stuff. Get out of here. Look at that. Okay. So dog boarding care. I mean, a lot of these places, look at the price points. You've got a plant farm for $3 million, right? Um, you've got this turnkey medical office for a million on auction. So a lot of stuff in here. I'm just showing you this Waco pool route, right? He's got 240 accounts with 55K a month in monthly service. Right. So, again, 240 accounts. How can you make that that price point go up? Right. That this is almost really valuable if you know someone in pool service or someone who wants to be in Waco. Et cetera. OK, so um, over the moon popcorn business, turnkey business in San Marcos. Remember, we talked with Michael Sneed over here talking about popcorn. Boom. OK, so what, what can this company do? This company has to, of course, work on its models and marketing. Right. For the sale of this popcorn. <clears throat> Let's keep going. A staging company. Why would someone be trying to sell their staging company? Because the the inventory may be old. Also, too, um, housing market is changing, right? So that some people may not want to deal with some of the staging stuff as much. Actually, this is actually pretty decent idea. Let me go ahead and put that over there. <laughs> medical supplies, medical scale calibration and scales with existing contract customers. Now, why would this be valuable to them? This one has over 75 facilities doing quarterly scale and lift operations. In Texas and Louisiana. Why would someone be interested in this? Government sales, government contracts. This is it. This is the only reason this would be interesting to me. Not because I have this $125,000 income coming back in, but because it's already an established business and I can go apply for government contracts. Bingo, bingo, bingo. Okay, so let's keep going. All right. 13 FedEx PD routes for sale. Okay, what's my only issue with FedEx, you guys? FedEx is like the, the dog crap after UPS. <laughs> And after Amazon, like FedEx, who's sending me something FedEx? I always make fun of my aunt when they send me stuff. I'm like, you sending me something FedEx? You dig what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> um, hey, listen, we can talk about that another day. Um, how do I set up technology-based operations if you're not tech savvy myself? You might have to outsource it, hire, period. Like a lot of people keep, how do I do this? No, you're going to have to either go train, get training, or hire. And this is the thing, like we got to let go of us doing everything. That doesn't work. That's not how corporate America works. All right, so here is CNG Transportation and Servicing Company. Okay, look what they're selling it for, 2.3 million. They got an HVAC, established HVAC company, right? Large consumer base. What's the thing about that is you have to keep being top of mind for this consumer base as far as a repair company, not just installing, but repair. Okay, a laundromat right here. Okay, well, what's the quality and condition of the machines in the laundromat? There's a vacant building, right? So again, we're just we're going on all these. You know, own your own 24-hour core lab fitness. Okay, so what's the difference in a lot of the gyms? Gyms are because of the pandemic, a lot of gyms went under. They don't have this one doesn't have any kind of personality, right? And and we know where all the gyms that make money are the ones with personality. It's the ones that, you know, superstars rock at, right? So we go over here. Uh, where's another one? Let me find you some more. Finesse hairstyle. Again, that, that's tied to a person, tied to personalities, you know, not necessarily the system. Established plumbing company. What's going to be the problem here? They've got over 25 years in this plumbing company. They've been doing service repairs and installation. 25 years sounds like what? Somebody retiring. Sounds like somebody retiring, and I bet you read the program and say, been doing it 25 years, bathroom, you name it, they do it. It's, this would be a great addition to an existing HVAC company. They have seven employees, okay? Think about that, right? Two weeks of support and training. They want to do other business ventures. Who, would, again, look at all these. Who would want to leave to do some other type of business venture in one of the hottest markets in Austin, Texas? Right. Again, I'm gonna pull some of these up. I'm just doing them as like just to show you examples of people are trying to tell you that you're gonna be able to run out here and buy all these businesses for no money down. You gotta have a plan. This is a handyman business. Didn't we just learn 
from my proceed to how cheaply we can start a handyman businesses with one guy we put in a truck, why would I pay somebody 1.5 million? Right? With cash flow of 430,000. It would have to be, right? It would just have to be either passion or love, but why not start your own thing? And a lot of people say, Eric, I don't want to start my own thing because I want the records, I want the years, I want the SOPs, I want the customers. Okay. Business currently operated out of the owner homer's own. All right. Current owner believes revenue consistency increase in the next couple of years. Selling, seller moving on to other things. This basis is home base. So to me, all I heard is <laughs> not or not. <laughs> it was over. That's what I heard. So um, you're gonna just start seeing a lot of that, right? Hey man, you can sell your business. Lender pre-qualified, electrical and lighting business. This, this is a four million dollar business that makes a million a year. Highly profitable. Gross revenue is $14 million a year. Mm, no numbers sound right crazy. Right? So, so what's the deal? Why are they selling? They have 55 employees. You get 12 weeks of training. Some stuff going on there, right? That's somebody who had contracts and lost them. That's got to be what that is. Right? And so so I want y'all to look on here with fresh eyes, but I also want you to understand. Get out of here. Ooh. I want y'all to understand that. You know, everybody wants to talk about buying a business because they don't want to start from scratch. But let me be very clear. Even if you buy this business from scratch, you're going to have to do a excessive amount of marketing. And you have to determine what type of owner you're buying from. If you're buying from somebody who is a craftsman, a master of craft, he might have a whole staff of people that are like, it's about the craft. It's not about the turnaround times, Erica. Right? If he buys it from someone who's a freedom fighter, he might have a bunch of independent rogues in there. You might have to clean the whole business out from top to bottom. Right? Correct? Um, again, great Odessa route. Great Austin Pool route. Again, this is great money for some guy who's 20 to 30 years old. He's going to make 117000 a year cleaning pools with 50 accounts, making 10 k a month for him and his wife. Great. But with inflation and gas prices, you dig what I'm saying? People people are getting a little nervous about that. Okay? So, again, Airbnb business for sale. They've got eight short-term rental properties. Right? Why would they Why would they be getting out of Airbnb, y'all? Again, these houses look real basic. Anytime you do anything real basic, people ain't trying to do that. Right? They're in Murphy. They're in a popular neighborhood in Dallas. Why would they be getting out of Airbnb? Established wine tour business. This is not a winery. This is basically a company that does tours. They're going to pick you up in a van. Okay? That's what they do. Why are they selling it for that much? I could buy my own van and wrap it for 5K. You, I don't think y'all understand. Like, these people are trying to sell you these companies. I want you to really read the book, Built to Sell. What you're going to learn is a lot of these companies, no matter how nice they look and they're making all this money, it's because the owner they currently have is why they make the money they make. Right. Go fishing and enjoy a six figure income. It's supposed to be a little fishing park. It's a bait place. Interesting. Uh, again, you're going to have all these older must sell medical spots, right? Liquor stores. You're going to have these older folks. They need to retire. They're tired of this business. They're tired of their staff. They 2020 wore them out. they sick of it. But is it worth it? Right? This person has a profitable cleaning business of $4 million a year. Okay, why are you selling it? What's going on, right? You have to ask these questions. Mattress Wholesale Store in New Braunfels. Let me just go tell you about New Braunfels. It's College Tech. I don't care if they have 175 star reviews. It's College Tech. People throw out mattresses. Them, them people be taking them and put them in their dorm rooms. They think. All right? Let me keep going. This is assisted living facility. Now, this actually takes my interest. Those things make a lot of money. Hold on real quick. Let's look at it. Assisted living facility in Georgetown, Texas, which is 55 and up mostly. Um, assisted living, three to 16 beds. That's weird. Three to 16 beds? Three to 16 is a big different number, okay? Um, One million renovation recently can beat on the city. An additional five to six acres of land is opportunity for future. Well, do we have the land or do we not have that land? Okay? So, again, why are they selling? Okay, it has 38 rooms housed in a building on 10 acres. Each room has its own private restroom, a shower, and an HVAC unit. 
Seek room offers table, blah, 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 blah. Cash to seller. Two SBA assumable loans are available. Ah, so you're taking over someone's SBA loan. So that means you actually have to qualify to take over those loans. That part right there. That part right there. You just don't understand how important that is. Like, I've literally had to take on partners to qualify for stuff. And I will never do it again. I'd rather cut my pinky toe off and have a hobble for the rest of my life than have to do with partners. Right? When it works, it works. When it don't work, it don't work. Right? But I want you to understand, they're selling you this, hey, man, everybody's going to be selling their business. And you can buy, you can be a wine, uh, a broker, sorry. You can be a broker for a business for cheap pennies on the dollar. I don't want y'all to fall for that. I want y'all to be really open and honest. Why are the people selling? How can you make this a reoccurring income business? National snack brand. Why are you selling a national snack brand? Did it not catch on? Is it not doing what you think it should do? A lot of people say, well, after so many people are done and they just want to move on. That's true. That is a possibility. Okay. Let me go on out here and see y'all comments. Um, but you, you got to realize a lot of people trying to sell these businesses, They their businesses run because of them, their personality, who they are, how they make it run. <laughs> Boomers, yeah. It'll take a minute to build a clientele. People will stay with them forever. That is one reason. That is one reason. Gym, beauty, spa is a great investment. People people are investing in their looks and body, but the staff turnover is, is astronomical. I go to this one uh, medical spa place, and they've had at least the whole staff turnover at least three times in the four years I've been going there. And I mean from front to the back. I have went through like eight massage techs there. There's only one woman left. And she came after the other ones left. I'm like, I love you. Please don't leave. If you leave, I will follow you. There was one dude I literally followed to the next location because I was like, this is insane. Right? But you got all these personalities. Um, you know, great person to check out on it. Johnny Bravo. Go look at Johnny Bravo's old content before he got crazy on stocks. He used to own a medical spa. He's like, you got 31 ladies and men with personalities all over the place working in one place. You're herding cats. Period. People counseling, they don't feel like coming in, they're independent contractors, you know, people unsatisfied, all kinds of stuff. Home base doesn't mean it's organized, but for a lot of these construction dudes, it does. Uh, trust me, I know what I'm talking about. Some of these businesses have no SOP and they're the head of the owners, yeah, who are there every day. So now if somebody say, Well, I'm gonna be around this business for two weeks, no, nah, that's not enough for me. You gotta be around for 90 days to four months because seasons change. And I want to get every bit of knowledge out your head before I go on this crazy campaign, um, crazy campaign to do all this marketing for this company that might not be worth it. <sighs> Mattress, I mean, again, money laundering, right? One of my clients buys a stress business and turn around. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, a, that's the thing. People do that. But I'm just telling you, there's a lot of people marketing that you're going to be able to come in and magically do this with no money down, and that's a lie. Um, why, why does it matter if I didn't mention Louisiana? Isn't it a part of the South? Like, let's stop overthinking my, what I said here, okay? Louisiana's shitty, but it's still the South. It has its moments. It has its places. Mobile home parks and housing, you'll still need that there. But overall, you know, Louisiana has a lot of crap going on with it. Corruption and crap. Uh, Mississippi is extremely poor. <laughs> number one, number two is Alabama. <laughs> the wealthier clients who like work remotely and go in the middle of the day. Exactly. If you buy a trucking business, do you have to register owner with register as the owner? And if, yes, DL, you do. You do. You are the new owner. You can't have the same old people's name on there. You know, technically Virginia is south, but people even say Maryland and stuff. They're like it's south of the Mason Dixon line. You know what I'm saying? It's shaffle the Mason Dixon. Okay, y'all, but do you consider anybody in Baltimore the equivalent of somebody in Georgia? No. So let's stop it. <laughs> Herding cats like hairstyles? Exactly. My friend's mom works at a hair salon. I said, she does hair. She's like, no, she's literally just the front end manager to manage the ladies. And so that's an actual job position. So the handyman business startup cost is much lower than what they're going for on the site. Exactly. And what happens is a lot of people, 
think they're going to buy these businesses and they're going to just pick up a staff and, and it's going to just run smooth. And, and this is why I'm just, I just want to dispel this myth. And I want you guys to read that book, Built to Sell. I want you to be really clear about what you're doing. So even this one right here, work from home cleaning business in Dallas for $12,900. Um, pretty much I know a couple of people I could buy a whole cleaning business with the operations, the website for 5K. Why would I buy this, right? Uh, let me go keep going. Cell phone store. Anytime, excuse me, anytime I see these cell phone stores, I always think they're a rip off. <laughs> always like, they money laundering. Um, let me see what else is in here. Washing machine, upscale pizzeria. This is in Austin. Yeah, this place is, is terribly dead. I never see any business at this place. They're just in a position by Costco that just doesn't make sense. And I don't even know why they thought to put it there. But I I can understand why they're selling. Let me see what else they got here. All these Amazon businesses, I don't trust them. Like, no thanks. Um, then unless they're drop shipping or what they're doing. No thanks. Let me see. Anything else in here different? Not really. Okay. Well, that's, 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 that's the most of what I was trying to get you guys to see. The whole build to sell model is like you're trying to buy businesses and people are trying to convince you that you're going to run across all these business brokers and it's going to be just so easy, man. You know, building, accelerating, harvesting, you're going to, you're going to sell these businesses and you're going to make a ton of it's like, y'all, stop. Do not do this to these people. Do, do not convince these people, one, that own a business that they're able to sell it for all this money because they're not, right? Um, <laughs> the first thing when I went to go get the new property manager and the new contractors in Detroit is literally like we had to finish out, okay, what's the value of all these properties? What, how much repairs do we need? Are they worth keeping? What's the first two we're going to sell? How much um, track record? Just, you name it, the paperwork that you need to um, just sell properties. I could imagine people saying, hey, I'm going to buy this business and take it over. And I'm like, the amount of paperwork. And the fact that I called, everybody called them <laughs> past six years. I've been getting on home with people and they don't even want to do QuickBooks. How are you going to figure out if they, the business qualifies? God bless you. Do you know what I'm saying? So this person is trying to sell you two Mercedes Sprinter vans and they have kind of a, a deal with seven wineries in the area. Good luck. Let me see what this looks like. No, I didn't want to do that. Okay, well, never mind. Let me try it again. Um, yeah, no, nah, good luck. A lot of this stuff is 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 hype season. Um, this elderly home folks, I would I would that makes sense. But they're asking for ten million dollars. You could build your <laughs> you could build a facility for that much. I mean, to be truthfully honest. So again, these are people who are looking. So these price points you're seeing, you guys, this nine million dollars, this million dollars for every business. Some of these are for family offices, right? Uh, hard money lenders, which again, hard money lenders just means a cash buyer. It just means people who, a collection of people who have cash who are going to pay per, right? Uh, same thing with when I was working with different hard money lenders uh, to try to finish out these properties and close them and get them sold. You know, it's like, okay, how much are they worth? What can I do this, that? You know, it's it's, it's a reason why um, hard money lenders are who they are and what they're looking for, the information they're looking for. Um, but yeah, I just want you to understand, like, they're trying to sell you this. And it, 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 like I've been telling you in a lot of our trainings, what it takes to recognize a business as far as documentation, um, yeah, y'all need it. So let me see what else I got going on here. Do I suggest starting your own business instead of buying one? Stevenson Legacy, if you're a family office, which a lot of what I've been telling you guys about pensions and retirements are family offices, basically bundling up a bunch of different businesses at high numbers. As long as they get four to five percent returns, really their goal is to get 12 percent returns. So then they take their fees off top and they say, hey, pension fund, look at all these returns. We're getting like eight percent returns because they're taking the top four percent off. And that pension fund goes, oh, this is perfect. We really only need four percent return. So then they buy a bundle of businesses for like. $200 million, $300 million, you know, $500 million and toss the money in there. 
and make it run. That's the point of why you, I'm showing you guys these businesses on here, because really they're aiming their budget and they're aiming their company to be sold at these high end family offices. Right. The smaller, cheaper stuff that has, you know, um, the smaller, cheaper stuff that has cash owner financing. Hey, we'll, we'll owner finance and you can buy this property and, and, and hey, you can pay the owner for a couple of years. Um, those deals are to the smaller guy, right? They don't want to see it go to some big company, right? Those people are who you're looking for, person. Right? So, so that's something people don't want to hear, but that's the truth. Like when you're talking about a million, you're talking about one to nine million. If you don't qualify for bank financing, if you don't have a bunch of credit cards, you can come take this company over. If you don't have a team where you're going to come take this over, it, it's not really for you. And here's the book in the chat. To the chat. Excuse me. I'm getting ready to go back outside and celebrate this Juneteenth weekend. We can put it in the chat here. Did y'all have questions about buying businesses or, or some of the pitfalls or things I've been seeing out here in the wild west of Texas? Um, a lot of these people too aren't really ready to retire. They don't even know the next thing they're going to do. So some of them are just saying that, like, yeah, we totally want to sell, man. Then you get there and you're doing all this song and dance and you're like, what is up? It really doesn't. It really doesn't. Um, ever since the Patriot Act of 2001, I mean, thank you know, blame 9-11. But basically, like if I try to, and, and some people try to do this, they have an LLC in Wyoming. Then this Wyoming LLC owns an LLC in Texas. And then this Texas LLC is going to own this other business so that it's cloaked. Because trust me, go, go get some of these free calls from some of these uh, accountants and people that help you hide your businesses. Uh, no, mm -hmm. no, SBA don't play that. SBA like, well, who, who am I talking to then? I don't care if you got 20 LLCs hiding them tired of it. Who is the person going on this SBA loan, right? Only half of VA has sweet tea in the restaurants. That part is, you know, the part is Nova. Uh, DC, you know, when DC was Chocolate City, it was South. Now it's like, eh, DC. Biden lived there. When Obama was there, it was Black. Now, I don't know about it. Richmond is south, no matter what. Listen, when I was in Richmond, I thought it was very nice. It has its struggles like everywhere else, but it was once a beautiful city. No, West Virginia doesn't count. No, West Virginia is, um, West Virginia is, uh, technically not south for various reasons, but anything below Maryland is technically south. Below the Mason Dixon line. <laughs> Uh, hard to get good cleaning service in Houston. Try four different companies. Staff shows up late, does not speak English. Cleaning so bar, treat your home and belongings any kind of way. Price north three hundred. That that's very true. That's very true. I mean, I'm here in Austin. I did a. I'm gonna have a deep luxury cleaning coming tomorrow, and well, they come on Monday. And I'm like, dude, we're paying four hundred bucks. Y'all better be here on time. Y'all better. And they usually are here for three to four hours. I mean, they're here like. I don't know what they cleaning. They be cleaning the oven. They be doing all kinds of stuff. Cleaning cobwebs. I don't know what they clean, but they clean everything they can find. Um, but it's hard to find good cleaning services, consistent ones. If you do find them, keep them. Keep them. I see a lot of grand openings and closing with gas stations. Yeah, there's a there's an exchange going on there. Uh, that's possible. Yeah. Home cleaning visas do have high turnaround. Very high. They really do. It, it's so sad. It's so sad. It's unfortunate. Uh, I don't care. Bella, we've already talked about that to death. I don't care. <laughs> like, if you have an Airbnb and an apartment, I don't care. I mean, at the end of the day, the only thing we're worried about out of this Airbnb thing is we already know hotel lobbies are fighting in every single city that you can see. They're fighting in every city, city against um, Airbnb, which you already know that's coming. So really the only people that matter in the Airbnb argument are homeowners. Um, you can't tell a homeowner what to do with their property. You can tell somebody that's in an apartment, whatever you want, because they're in an apartment. You can even tell somebody in the condo and in townhouse, whatever, because they're not in a house. Um, but when you start trying to tell a homeowner who and what they're going to have in their house, oh, you're talking about, oh, good old constitutional law. So... I don't give a damn about it, Atlanta. I'm sorry. I've talked about it enough. 
I don't care. <laughs> like, like if, if you rent some apartment out, that sorry about you. This is an infringement on property rights. Um, but what it's going to take is homeowners fighting it. it nobody cares what apartment owners, apartment renters think. Sorry. The, the, the apartment lobby is so much bigger. Association, they don't care. Now, if you said homeowners, like a, if you said out of the 4,000 Airbnbs, they were 3,000 homeowners, you're talking about a fight of, of the city. Of, of, of their life tooth and nail why do i know that i'm here in austin texas and they literally had to just go okay we're gonna pause because in austin the majority of the airbnb is homeowners and they didn't have the money to fight homeowners so different type of thing sorry about you all right how about one how about buying one of those ac repair businesses in florida again you guys you're buying it for the subscription possibility if you come to somebody's office and they have some AC business that has a thousand, three thousand, four thousand customers they've served and they have their phone numbers, their addresses, their names, how much they spent with them, it may be worth it. Right? But I'm gonna tell you like this, Roland and our, that services our family, he sold his business to two young guys. Guess who everybody still calls to this day? Roland. And Roland even gave them their phone number. Um, eventually just gave him his new phone. Just eventually just gave him the new phone because they still kept calling his phone every day. And he'd be like, y'all, like this phone is for my, my children, my grandchildren. They'd be like, Roland, I want you to come to my house. I don't want these new people I don't know. Same thing with the guy that does our, our family. And he does plumbing. Roland does plumbing. Our other family guy that does ACs, he's 60 something, 68 or something like that. His new wife is 36 and they have some children. His son, what's the funny is his new wife is 36. His son is like 45. And he tried to sell the business to his son, but again, people don't want the son. They want the dad to come out. And the dad's out there walking with a cane, and you'd be like, man, what you still doing working? Man, you know, I got this young wife. People, when you buy businesses from people that are like good personalities, that's a tough one. That's a tough. I mean, for the next 10 years, people are gonna be like, oh man, Stevenson, you bought Gary's AC company? Man, how's Gary doing? That's what they're gonna be asking you. Even now, when I went to go buy that business out in uh, Gerald, Texas, when I started like investigating, like we did our proper paperwork, and I ended up telling one of the tow truck companies, hey, I'm getting ready to buy this place, that tow truck company guy told 30 companies. And then the people that owned this say, hey, why are you telling everybody you're buying this place? I said, we didn't tell anybody but one tow truck guy. And they said, well, that one tow truck guy told 30 other business owners, which makes us look crazy. Now, the number one thing is our friends have a business up north and their parents want to sell because they're so old, but they're scared to start advertising that they're selling the business because they don't want the employees to start stealing. And it's just a conundrum on both sides. So lots of money in the wellness space, but hard to get qualified and great workers. Also a team with the nurse practitioner. That is the hardest. I go get um, IV bags, uh, IV treatment. And if the nurse ain't there or she don't feel good or she had to leave for the day, it's the whole half the, half the business can't run. They're like, would you like cryo? Would you like to get in this massage chair? No. Can you remember I that? No, it don't work, DL. It really doesn't. Um, the bank at any time can basically go, we need to know the original owner of that LLC. We need to know the owner of that LLC. Like, it don't work. It, the whole money laundering, Ozark shit, that stuff don't work no more. <laughs> it really doesn't. Like, the, the, the Patriot Act really kills like that whole Tony Soprano ideal business and, and Ozark, even the Ozark show, some of the stuff they're doing is outdated, right? You'd even, even to make that work in Ozark, you'd have to have so many people be the actual business owner. It's insane. You'd have to keep including people on in what you're doing. Wouldn't work. <laughs> yeah. Listen, she got to fire her daughter. She got to do what she got to do. If your daughter ain't sharing up, she got to go home. I paid 375 for deep clean and she was awesome. Took fire routers in Alabama. Congratulations. It's worth it, right? Because you just come home and it's just different. Different level of cleaning. Yeah, this is true. This is true. Geeky Dan, that is a, a good way to good way to get some help. I'm telling you, Katrina, this is the first thing everybody would say. I don't know these people. We're not calling them. So you buying somebody's existing business thinking that's going to work. I've seen it not work. I'm from North Carolina. I see this guy rolling, doing three to, Roland used to be so busy all day. He's like, I hate this. I'm ready to sell. I'm going to retire. Okay, well, now Roland does three to four jobs a day. 
And we were like, Roland, you still working? He's like, well, I do three or four. I just do what I want to do. Okay, so you went from doing 10, 15 a day. You know, he did plumbing, so not that many, but to doing three or four, right? He's 75. I think he just wants to feel useful. So, again, you want to buy this business off a of boomer. And what if they're bored? What if they don't have no life? What if they don't have grandkids to go see? They're going to keep working. Grant Cardone's brother is a prime example. Let me see if I can pull him up. Um, Gary Cardone. Let me see if I can pull him up. He built a company in UK in the oil and gas industry. Let me show you here. Gary Cardone. Yeah, here's, I don't know if this is an official account. No, that, ain't, that can't be. Is it? That might be his official account. Hold on a second. Gary Cardone. Mm, I'm not certain. Let me see if I can just pull up Gary Cardone's information off, outside of um, the internet. There you go. There you go. All right. So let's go here. Just pull up LinkedIn and call it a day. Yeah, that's what we're going to do, baby. Okay. Let me share the screen. That probably would help. I share the screen. Let me. So this is Gary Cardone. Gary Cardone is so smart. His twin brother of Grant Cardone, right? That's the crazy part. He built this company. See if it's up here. Let's put it right here. Okay, so here it is. Down here. Go down here. Is it up here? Oh, you might take it down. Okay, so let me see. Let's see if it let me go. All right, here you go. Oh, let's go down to the bottom. All right, so he built this one company right here called Various Executive. Anyway, Dying Energy, right? He began there. He worked there. Cool. No problem. So then. Oh, they took it down. Anyway, well, they took some of it down. So long story short, he he started his career with this Dynast Energy. He started a company that basically, essentially, uh, was a offshoot of this, a subsidiary, as you can see right here, right? Um, and what he ended up doing is the company was like, yo, we fired you, but then you made this subsidiary that is, does the exact same thing. And it took made billions of dollars, right? And so they bought it off of them. Well, then he did it again. So if you ever check out his, if you ever read Gary Cardone's brother, blows your mind. Dude, dude did one time and made the same exact business. Why? Because in the in the writing, they didn't tell him he couldn't make a, another business. They never told him he couldn't do, <laughs> he couldn't make the same business again. So when he made the same business the second time and made billions of dollars off the oil industry, they were like, all right, dude, that's enough. Like they bought it the second time and they essentially told him, Hey, in the contract, they said you cannot create another business in this area. So then he went to um, a little bit work with his brother, Grant Cardone, but he also did a thing called chargeback 911. What's the number one argument of businesses right now? People are doing chargeback left and right. I don't know if y'all can see, but is it too low? This should be bigger. And what chargeback 911 is a comprehensive fraud mitigation, risk management, loss prevention company serving card not present merchants in the global market. They're making millions. Why? Because that's the number one problem people are having is people are out here doing these crazy level chargebacks, right? And so if a company is like a target, the target's getting hit left and right in the leg, that's part of what they do, right? So again, go look up his brother, blows your mind. He says to this day, if he'd have thought about it, when they first paid him multi millions of dollars and he didn't take his brother serious, he would have put more money with with Grant, and he said we would already been billionaires because I had made all this money and I was just blo you know goofing off, you know. Um, but yeah, energy complex for natural gas. I mean, again, now they're off Louisiana, like super smart. Went to Europe, worked in this company in Europe, and kicked butt. It's insane. But go, go read up on his brother. His brother is like the brain. You know what I'm saying? As much as people like like um, Grant Cardone, so amazing. His brother is the the big, big baller. You know what I mean? Uh, that's what I had there. There you go. My uncle has a landscape business in Metro Chicago. Clientele going back to the 70s. 40-year-old son still lives at home and doesn't want the business. <laughs> Come on, man, Anthony. That's just sad. That's 
That's sad. That really is. Unfortunately. He should be his son's legs. Common story. There, there's a something about our, our human bodies that need struggle. If we don't get it, we don't we don't thrive well. So somewhere in that story, something happens. Okay. Common story. Someone fails to come to a bigger one. They run it to the ground. The founder buys it back for pennies on dollar. Yeah, there's a dude who bought a, he had a junkyard in Dallas. He's on um, Blue Collar Millionaire Show. Was making killer money. He was like, I'm done. Out of here. Leaves. Company doesn't make it work like he made it work. He bought it back. Sold it again and then bought it back for the third time. You know, sometimes people know their business better than other people know. So um, that's, that's what I had for y'all today. I just wanted to really kind of dispel this myth where everybody's selling to you that you're going to buy a business for no money down. And I mean, like, if you don't know, if you're not well versed in um, corporate America and dealing with employees and firing people and company takeovers, people that you buy the business from can burn that thing down on the back of it. They can take all their staff. Their staff can do trickery. All kind of crazy stuff. But what you have to learn out of this is which one are you on this thing? Are you a mountain climber? Are you a freedom fighter? Or are you a craftsman? Right? Do you want to buy some little small craft business that's super cool and you just want to work on it in your backyard? Cool. Right? Um, but if you're a freedom fighter, you know, don't take on huge debt. You'll be working for the debt. Don't take on a lot of business partners. You'll be working essentially for the business partners. And everybody doesn't have the patience. They aren't real business people. They're nine to five workers and there's nothing wrong with that, but they're not going to think about it um, like a real long-term investor will. And the thing, the way our economy is set up, you guys, and the way the legal system is set up, there's so many, there's so many 50,000 ways people can jump through things. You'll be in court for 20 years. <laughs> you can be in court for 20 years and guess what? It won't matter. Again, I'm trying to give y'all a heads up from what I'm seeing out in the marketplace. I'm in different masterminds and people have literally walked away from their social media businesses and bought uh, people's government contract businesses, uh, literally, or, or bought other functioning businesses. And I joke about Ozarks because, you know, literally you hit somebody with enough cash to sell their business, but you got to be smart about it. So um, you always present great. Oh, thank you so much. You always present amazing content to our community to help people that look like you to improve their chances and change their way of life. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Um, that's awesome that you said that. But that's what I got for y'all today. Um, know yourself. Determine where you are in this spectrum. Don't get caught up in the hype cycle that you're going to buy a business from people. Also, be careful on taking on investors. At the end of the day, like, um, in order to be have full control of a thing, I mean, look at what happened with Twitter and Elon Musk. Elon Musk just bought so many shares. It's like you you can't get him out of there. You can't get him out of there. What you gonna do? Um, and, and what ends up happening is, uh, I think Diamond Dave does a really great video <laughs> talking about somebody. He's like, you can try to force somebody to give you something, and they're gonna give you a little bit of something and make you think you took it. You gotta really understand. <laughs> y'all out here thinking y'all gonna take something, take houses, take take money, take businesses. It's not gonna work like that. It's not gonna work in your favor. It doesn't work like that. So um, really be smart, really educate yourself. And sometimes it's good to build a thing from the ground so you know how much marketing it costs to really handle it. So, all right, you guys, this is your girl, Erica Classy Klein blog this week. I know you guys are very upset about me going to film an eviction, but I also have to get some properties put on the market. So it won't just be a video about eviction, hopefully. And also um, just working with some really great brokers. I found one out of Atlanta. Uh, and we're gonna we're gonna see if he'll come on camera. And if he'll come on camera, <laughs> uh, yeah, you, you don't have to start a business to make thousands of dollars. If he'll come on camera, if if, if two of the hard money lenders I know will come on camera, we'll have a really great conversation. Um, because right now a lot of people are just buying out partners, buying out things, um, cash out rebuying at all time highs. Y'all gonna, gonna learn. You're gonna learn today. So, anyway, you guys, this is your girl Erica Classical on blog. Later.